it's in. Yeah. So that's that's a problem, but it's also great. it's a good problem that's because a great that thing. tells folks, yeah, this this school is popping. They got folks that want to get here, and sometimes uh, there's a little bit of a delay. Not on all grades, not on all grades, but certainly some. So you might want to call ahead and remember, 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 as we tell you each and every Saturday, uh, we have a diagnostic test that we offer children so that we can place them properly in the right grade. We never want to place a child in a grade in which they will not succeed. So that's very important to their future. And uh, parents, sometimes uh, parents make a decision and say, uh, 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 I'm not putting my child back. But overall, uh, some most folks say, yes, if that's what's best for my child, I'm looking at the long-term result, which means uh, we're going to get that kid in college if they stay with us. We're, let me repeat that. We're going to get that kid in college if they stay with us. we That's kind of our guarantee because we, board member, tell us what we do about high school graduates. They don't graduate unless they have an acceptance letter and have been accepted into a college. All right. Wow, that's kind of tough. That's kind of tough. It, it can be very tough, but okay. that's why we're here. You okay. know, we're, we're making the parents have a choice and they can uh, make sure that their kids are okay. not socially promoted, but also guarantee them that their children will be accepted into their college and will be able to attend. That sounds like high standards to me. Very high standards. I think the Bible has high standards too. Sure does. Okay, so I think that's a good correlation. And oh, you have high standards. Well, I certainly do, sir. I have you as a board member. Right? <laughs> and I remember sounds the, like a pay raise. <laughs> and I remember the first time you maybe sat in the corner, but we won't say how long ago that okay. was. Okay, we're going to skip over that. We have another <laughs> guest with us this morning who lived in the corner. Uh, hi, Buckethead. How you doing? Good morning, okay. sir. Okay, this is my son, ladies and gentlemen, Kurt, and I can call him a Buckethead because I raised him. And I did pretty darn good on my dad. How you doing, buddy? I'm hanging in there. Okay. We have you on the air today for a special reason, and that is you have one of your high school, uh, no, well, college football friends with you, a uh, young man that we knew in California. You attended college out there. You guys played ball together. and California uh, State University, University Fullerton. Fullerton. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, you graduated, of course, with a bachelor's in business administration. And emphasis emphasis management, and management and marketing, wasn't it? Or? And also uh, that, that is management okay. and then a bachelor's in communication, emphasis, advertising. Okay, very good. So uh, when I pass away here, sir, <laughs> I hear my advertising son. <laughs> I'm learning go. stuff every day here. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a great program. We've got a special call in today. We're going to get serious now for a moment. A special call in today from a gentleman, Kurt's friend, and a family friend as well. I knew him certainly when he was in California, from Columbus, Ohio. And uh, his name is Eric. We call him Ricky Franklin. So I might say Ricky during our conversation. And Kurt, maybe you could give him an indication to call right now. He's going to call in and spend some time with us. I'll give you a little, a little uh, quick look. Ricky is uh, was an excellent football player. In fact, I think he got a tryout with the, uh, he was San, with the Diego San Diego Chargers, Chargers for a small stint. Yes. Okay, very good. So you know he's a quality athlete, athlete. But he's also now a, certainly a quality individual. He does counseling. He does counseling. And his counseling is in the area of substance abuse. And um, he has a, quite a testimony. We are on a religious station. and. Uh, Ricky had, uh, we communicated with him a little bit. He sent me an email that I was very moved at. And uh, I said, then we called him. I said, Rick, you, you want to come on, t on the radio and tell us some of the things you've done? Uh, and he said, uh, I don't know about that. And then finally he called back and said, yes, I'll do it. So this is a big step for him in terms of um, his willingness to share. I think we'll hear a part of his life, which is going to be fascinating as well as what, how he serves uh, others within the Columbus, Ohio area. Um, so my son has, uh, you text him or email him, him or text. something, whatever you guys do socially here, okay. <laughs> I'm still into dialing phones, so you know where I'm at, audience, okay. He still uses an old <laughs> manual typewriter. <laughs> yeah. Smoke signals. Not, not quite, see, not, not quite there. <laughs> but anyway, folks, if you want to call in, come on, do that, 23957. Three three two three nine five seven three three. Uh, we're trusting we might have another call in as well, particularly from our our friends. We have a family in the Genesee Valley Mall right now ringing bells. They may call us as well. And I think we have a caller coming yes, in. I'm not sure who it is. How are we doing? Uh, Art, I think we have a call. A caller. Okay. Might this be? Hi, caller. Good morning to you. Good morning. You're live on the air. Uh, good morning, Miss Winslow. Oh, this is Rick. Rick, we've been talking about you here. 
Okay, and seated down my right is somebody you know pretty well. Uh, you guys used to shower together. <laughs> Let's put that into context. Yeah, yes, in the football locker room. Yeah, okay. you. All right, very good. Uh, we're going to have fun, Rick. And seated on my left, sir, is one of our board members at our school. His name is Dan Smith. I've known him for an extensive length of time as well. And, Rick, I've introduced you a little bit before you got on the air about your uh, athletic prowess, your San Diego Charger stint, and the fact that you're a counselor in substance abuse in and around the Columbus, uh, Ohio area. And, Rick, I, I told folks that you, you have a, maybe a little testimony as well if you feel so moved. So why don't we um, just ask you to begin in whatever fashion you wish to. We, Kurt, and Dan, and myself may very well question you at some point to, to further illustrate some remarks you might make. So welcome to Flint, Michigan, Eric Franklin. Thank uh, you very much. Just go ahead and take it away, my friend. Okay, well, um, I, I moved to uh, Columbus from uh, the California area, you know, and I was working with uh, Coca-Cola and uh, Coca-Cola was uh, actually doing pretty well with found myself uh, drinking, though, with a lot of the people that I was selling uh, to, and that ultimately led to me having a seizure. And uh, at that time, I was uh, put on disability, and I couldn't work, because uh, I couldn't drive a company vehicle. And, um, so I, I started drinking more, and um, it got to the point where my wife was talking to me and telling me that I didn't have anymore. And of course, I'd argued with her until I was fine. Jesse, are we loud enough? Pardon me? Hang on just a minute. Jesse, are we loud enough for the audience? Yeah. We are. Okay, here. all right, because I can't naturally hear what's going on there. Eric, I interrupted you because you have a very cogent testimony, and I wanted to make sure we were loud enough on the air. So I interrupted you. Please forgive me, but continue no. if you don't mind, sir. No, I was saying, though, um, while I was in the treatment center, I was gone for three months, and I was far away from home, uh, away from my wife, my kids, my, my family, my loved ones, and I felt very alone uh, with a bunch of strangers. Um, a bunch of professionals, though, uh, but still yet strangers. And um, a, a lot of the recovery process is based on the 12 steps of Alco Alcoholics Anonymous. And um, God is mentioned all through these steps. However, they said, uh, in the field, they say the God of your understanding. Well, I only understand one God. And um, I started uh, questioning my faith, digging into my faith. And um, I realized that I just always had a concept of God, but I didn't really have a relationship. And um, well, that's when I just started thinking about Jesus Christ. And I started reading his teaching. And it became clear to me that I can know God through Jesus Christ. Um, again, I've never had any doubt as to who God is. And I didn't buy into the stuff of God of your understanding. I mean, in my mind, it's only one God. And, uh, well, just my faith in Christ allowed me to know God and where he wanted me to be. And uh, it allowed me to accept the fact that I did have a drinking problem, that it didn't change who I was. Uh, my disease, as we recognize it now in this field, does not uh, describe my character, does not make up my character. Um, so uh, I began praying, praying at about 5.30 each morning, and I've been doing so for about six years now. And uh, I think that, I certainly don't think that God caused me to drink too much, that's not what I'm saying. I do think, though, that through that trial, um, I became closer to God, and he, I realized that he was always with me. I just kind of forgot to focus on him and on Christ. So that's essentially it. I'm happier now than I've ever been. I work in the field of, uh, of uh, addictions, and uh, it's really an honor to be a, a part of people's lives, a positive part of people's lives. There's so many uh, negative things going on in society. I get a chance to sit down with people one-on-one -on -one and, and show them kindness and love, and if they see a difference in me, well, that opens the door for me to share with them that I'm a Christian. And uh, my faith tells me not to judge anyone, but to help people. So um, that's basically in a nutshell. I'm 
Mm-hmm. Rick, great. Yeah, we are on a, a spiritual station, and I'm sure there are some folks that listen that can definitely identify with you, perhaps personally, but most likely uh, some family members or friends or associates have, have gone that same way. Um, you have to be commended, of course, and the Lord, I'm sure, led you to do that, was to check yourself into that facility and then remain there and was diligent. And, of course, your, your prayer uh, life right now, 5.30 every morning, devoting time to prayer for whatever's uh, on your mind, of course, probably as well, uh, you know, your, your own situation so that you would not be, uh, so the devil would not tempt you in any form or fashion. Uh, what, what a great testimony. Now, uh, t tell us just a little bit, uh, again, you have a lovely family. Just hit it quick regarding um, your son and you know, the great success your daughter's experiencing in high school. And then also oh, mention your lovely wife, who I have yet to meet, sir. Uh, <laughs> you, you well, I'll start with my wife. Uh, I married a Christian woman. <laughs> um, her father is a, uh, he's a very, uh, he's a man of faith. He's an engineer. However, whenever he's home in town, uh, he goes to the local prison and he ministers to the prisoners there. Back. Wonderful. Um, my wife at this very moment, she's uh, very involved in the church. Uh, she works in uh, securities and investments. However, she spends an equal amount of time working in a, a place called the Clothes Closet or Joseph's Coat, which is affiliated with the church where they give away free clothing and food to the homeless. And uh, she's there every uh, Wednesday evening and Saturday during the day. Um, my son, I'm very proud of him. Um, as you remember, I had a son when I was in college, and I had joint custody of him. However, he stayed with me, and my wife and I has raised him. And he's since uh, graduated from Morehouse College. Uh, tricked us into paying for his uh, graduate school, where he studied uh, marketing and advertising. He now works in New York. And uh, my little baby girl, Justine, is looking to go to the University of Chicago, perhaps, or uh, Maybe undergrad at Ohio State, and then oh, I, I can't. I, I didn't. I didn't hear that right. What? What, what was <laughs> that four-letter word he just used on the religious station? You're in Michigan country here, Richard. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, how I hate Ohio State. <laughs> well, I'm going for the University of Chicago. Put it okay. that way. We can live with that, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I've just really been blessed with a, a wonderful family. And uh, it's just one of those simple things, I think, that oftentimes I looked over. I got so caught up in trying to work and make money and have profit margins and bonuses and things that I couldn't look to see the wonderful people that I was surrounded by and uh, the friendships that I've developed through the years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, your sons included. Um, at, one, at one point, uh, when I wasn't doing too well, Kurt uh, came to visit. And he recognized that I wasn't doing well. I didn't know, of course. And uh, a week later, he showed up with a couple of buddies of mine from California. And even after all that, I still didn't realize that they were concerned about me. It was a year later that it dawned on me that uh, they were trying to do some sort of intervention on me, perhaps. Way to go. So, for that, I'm very thankful. Uh, I wish I would have recognized it then, but uh, that's just how the sickness goes. Yeah. You know, when I, I started in this field, and a professor told me that, I'll be doing, dealing with clients who have a disease that constantly tells the client that there's nothing wrong with them. And I can understand that now. Um, the way it was uh, described to me is that normally if a person finds out that they have a disease, that they're diagnosed by a physician that they have a d d disease, they uh, run for help. However, with the addict, they're constantly telling themselves that there's nothing wrong with them. And what well, I felt right into that category. So. Okay. Rick, this is Kurt. Do you have a question you want to ask Rick of something that you guys may uh, you know about him that I might not that you'd like to have explored? No, just uh, you know, this can go in many directions. But I just that he in college uh, he, he was studying criminal justice, right, and it's just right. so funny how things have happened. Uh, Romans eight twenty eight, all things happen for a reason. How he's ended up in this particular field. Yeah. It, 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 it's, yeah. it's almost like it was destiny. You were selected, it's, Rick. It's his yeah. true calling, yeah. which was never on his itinerary of let me check this yeah. off, let me head in this direction. Okay. No, no. Um, you know, though, I've, again, I've always believed in God. I was looking at an old picture of mine uh, where I'm blocking for a quarterback uh, on a blitz, and I just happened to notice that my wrist were taped. On my wrist, I had a cross drawn on there. Uh, so, I've always known of God, I've always believed in God, but 
my relationship has been strengthened through Christ. Um, I understand what stand with God wants from me through Jesus Christ. Okay. What He wants me to be, and the man that He wants me to be. So uh, I just feel much better about myself as a person. I feel that I have a lot more to, uh, to uh, commit to society. Okay. Rick, Kurt just wrote a note here to me, and uh, I, I, I know you might be a little embarrassed, but apparently you shared with him that among your fellow counselors you are very highly thought of related to your way to relate to folks as well as the results that you get from uh, the way you interact with them. So I think, again, you, you may have truly found your calling in terms of leading people out of that disease but perhaps as well, maybe leading them to some direction that they might come in contact with the Lord directly and as committed as you are. So again, yeah. for all of this big picture that we don't know very much about, but things are shaping up for you there, and I think there's a master uh, in, in charge of your life that is putting things uh, in order for all those that come <coughs> in contact with you. Dan Smith. I do have a question. It's a simple, I believe it's a simple yes or no question for you, Eric. Do you find that because you have been there, it is easier for you to relate and understand what the individuals who you counsel are going through? You know, oftentimes I run into clients that say, because I deal with a lot of opiate addicts, a lot of heroin addicts, and um, they'll say to me that I can't understand them unless I've been an addict or a heroin addict. And I never share with them that I'm an addict or that I'm a, an alcoholic. Um, because then they get caught up in my story, what's going on with me as opposed to looking at themselves. However, when I come across that, I explain to them that my daughter was delivered by a male doctor who told my wife what she was going to feel, when she was going to feel it, helped her deal with her emotions, helped her heal herself. And well, he's never had a child before. So you can always be helped by somebody who's necessarily been through something. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I okay. Try to get them, because that can be a defense mechanism for a client. Mm -hmm. Well, great answer, Rick. Um, again, we're, we've got a couple other fact, We have another caller on the line, I think, that's been holding. Rick, it has been an absolute honor to talk with you. I remember you sliding. We used to call you, what do we used to call him? Fast. No. <laughs> he was fast. Slide. Trust me. We had a nickname. Smooth. Silk. Didn't smooth we call him Silk? silk? <laughs> yeah, Smooth as Silk. The way you used to, to run on the field, Rick. It looked I like it was effortlessly. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was you, smoking. You, you could run, but it never looked like you were going anywhere. Except well, yards by yards by yards. So I enjoyed watching you play, my friend. Thank you very and much. I will look forward to meeting your wife and uh, any portion of your family that's available when I'm there. But oh, we're going to we're going to yeah. come down to, and and shake your hand, my friend. Okay, that would be great. Well, Ricky, on behalf of International Academy, we wish you a very merry Christmas, and uh, I'm sure you and Kurt will chat perhaps even after this. Thank you for your testimony, and folks, those that are listening in, in, on the radio, of course, um, if you know of anyone that has an issue related to the disease of alcoholism or other abuse, and, and maybe you don't want to talk with anybody here in, in Flint, I don't know, maybe that's how you feel about it, uh, why don't you call us, at uh, myself, uh, at International Academy, we could certainly refer you to Ricky for maybe an initial conversation and then that might uh, help in guiding them to a direction they might like to go. I don't think you can work with them at that distance of Columbus to, to Flint, but maybe if they, if they would just like to talk with a, a gentleman of your quality, both spiritually as well as an individual with high ethics and morals and uh, that experience the issues that they're facing, maybe that would be someone that would like to contact you. Rick, thank you so very much. Merry Christmas to you. May God continue to bless you in your efforts. And Ricky Franklin of Columbus, Ohio, thank you for a great morning, my friend. Thank you very much for having me, sir. Merry yes, sir. To okay, bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Bye -bye. And would, could we have the other caller, please? Line two. <coughs> Line Hello, two. caller. Hello, somebody. Anybody on the phone? Probably couldn't wait that long. Maybe they couldn't, must have maybe they couldn't wait, and I can well understand that. That's, that's quite all right. So Kurt, I'll, I'll call upon you for a moment of reaction to what Rick said. And of course, you've known him really, really well for yeah. a number of years. You've seen him in his maybe his worst moments. <laughs> um, can you give I, us a I, quick I analysis here? I, I've never obviously witnessed him uh, doing his counseling, but I remember that even back in college when I met him, I nicknamed him uh, for a quick minute a chameleon because he had the ability to adapt with whoever or whatever environment he was in. Mm. He would relate 
to all people at all levels. Mm -hmm. And this was what I noticed back in college. So I can only imagine that what he's doing now um, in, in his chosen field, if yeah. it were, um, that he's, he's doing I'm a fantastic job. I'm not so sure he job. chose that. I, well, I think it, God might have chose that for him. It, it, <laughs> it, 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 destiny. It, yeah. it was uh, uh, laid out for him, for sure. Okay. But I, I have no doubt that, um, that everyone that he talks with, um, he absolutely, re it, it, it's not a... Uh, a uh, master uh, uh, or, or teacher sort of mm -hmm. thing. I, I believe he's communicating with them at their level. Okay. Um, I, like I say, right. chameleon in, in essence yeah. speaks for itself. Okay. Dan, you had a great question of him. Thank you for the for that. Well, I, I know a few people who are in counseling and some of them have said that when they see someone who has been through it and then has gone into the field yeah. of counseling that they have a better interaction with the... Might mean more to them. Because they, yeah. they can't understand. Okay. Not that those who haven't been through it don't understand, but because you've been there, you, you yeah, know how they're actually, you that. know what yeah. they're really going through. Good point, good point indeed. Okay, well this was a little little bit somber program, somewhat different from what we sometimes have, but I th this might have been led as well. There could be someone that needed to hear this, and I hope that the audio was good for everyone out there, and uh, we'll proceed with maybe uh, some other lighter things going on. Um, in fact, we have a uh, if you have on the TV camera, and by high TV audience, by the way, and Paul Herring, thank you. Quans is coming up December 26th, yep. Marion Hall. So uh, actually, it's going to be at Bethel United Methodist on the 26th. That Same that. time. We, we moved that on us. Did yeah, 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 we did. Okay. We did. Right. They decided to have it there in the common rooms to accommodate their uh, parishioners. Okay, very, very good. That's yeah. a positive move then. Sure. Very good. Okay. Uh -huh. Quans of December 26th begins. It's a... Seven day feast. Seven day, seven fest? day festival would be mm -hmm. a better way to say it. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, thank you, Paul. If you want to give a quick number to call in case they're interested, I can. Uh, 810 239 2901. We encourage people to come on out, join the village. Even if you can't uh, come out to Bethel on the 26th, you can celebrate Kwanzaa at home. You okay. know, yeah. Okay, very good. Why don't you slip that number again? Get your pen out quick. Here 810 239 2901. <laughs> you liked that, didn't He's you? He's a pain over there. He's a like pain that. audience. Give him a call. Uh, uh, <laughs> they'll remember that number. <laughs> well, on, on the little table we have here in this little studio here at WFLT, and Sammy Jordan, good morning to you if you're listening, buddy. We've got a red kettle on, on the, on the uh, table. You may have seen a little article in press release that the Salvation Army is now about 75%. Uh, as far as their goal is for uh, it's, it's over eight hundred thousand dollars that we need in Flint to help support uh, um, uh, utility bills and toys and clothing and food and all that the Salvation Army does. You folks know pretty much what that is, but we're about twenty five percent short, and there aren't very many days left. So, if you go to the mall, go shopping, go anywhere, and you see a red bucket, just reach in the pocket. If something's in there, throw it in. And uh, we need to make our goal because the need in Flint. The need in Flint, as we all know, is tremendous. Salvation Army and other organizations, uh, Red Cross and, and United Way, all of us do things, but Salvation Army is uh, very particular in what the, the help they're able to give. And uh, please um, give, them a, give them a nod here the next few days if you see the, the, the kettles out. And then also, hey, Dan Smith, you were there. Let me call the date to you. December 18th. 2012. Yeah. Where were you? At 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and you know, this is going to sound funny, folks, but it's it was a very unique experience for our school. We were chosen by the Mission Department of Education for visa and these other folks yeah. come in. But for an adult to say, I believe the adults were more excited about the <laughs> football star that we had there than the kids, because the kids might not be old enough to yeah. remember him playing. But it was fantastic to have Herman Moore, former Detroit Lion wide receiver, in the uh, presence. I was just showing Kurt and Jesse some pictures that were taken that oh, day. So, uh, you, I mean, it was a great event for the kids and everybody had a great time. And the Detroit Lions won the football game that they played that day yes, against did. the Atlanta Falcons on the screen, three to nothing. So let's hope that's a, okay. a uh, prediction of tonight's game. Okay. Uh, well, what's tonight? Tonight. It is 8.30 on ESPN. Monday night football on Saturday night. <laughs> okay. And well, how many that schools? wasn't a commercial plug. <laughs> <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, how many schools in America can can tell you that Herman New, Herman Moore, all pro offensive uh, receiver, receiver uh, offensive and whatever, uh, was laying on the floor of International Academy of Flint Gym. He did that for a picture with our athletic team and some other kids. What a great guy. He had a great message. Yeah, we had a little fun with him. 
uh, but there was a message there as well regarding uh, the value of understanding finances and this program that was introduced at our school will do that uh, for hopefully all of Michigan kids but uh, Herman Morgan had a great testimony just a great testimony about the value of funds he came into money quickly being a pro you know big time sign the contract and he's a millionaire but what do you do with the money after you get it? He testified it well that sometimes five, six years after that big contract, some of the pros that signed for huge money, more than we'll ever see in our life, have nothing because they don't know how to handle it. So this program that he helped introduce along with Michigan State um, Treasurer Andy Dillon was in our school as well. They were interviewed by all three TV stations here locally. He also proclaimed the value of understanding financing, and this program will help our kids, your kids, all kids in Michigan be able to do a better job. We were honored by being selected for that privilege. Dan Smith, you were there just as wide-eyed as the kids were. Well, I, I have to tell you, I, I was very impressed with the fact that uh, we were supposed to have a current lion there, but because of a mandatory practice that they had on Tuesday, he wasn't able to make it. And the folks from Visa and MDE, MDE contacted Herman Moore on Monday, late Monday afternoon, I understand. And he was in Virginia yeah. visiting his son who goes to school there. Okay. And he turned around and jumped on a plane and came just to come to our, see our kids. And it was he fantastic. wanted to meet you. I talked to him privately. Okay. He said, yeah. I need well, to meet Dan. He told me he wanted to meet Okay, you. folks, we're getting the high side here. We gots to go. We gots to go. So how do we get to go? Wherever you are, folks, if you're, there's Mad Dan Smith on the horn. If you're walking your dog or playing with a blog, if you're looking at somebody and they are peeling potatoes in Petoskey, look at them and say, Woo! Wee! I forgot myself. There's some kind of school. <laughs>